had a lot of thoughts yesterday and last night about some of his friends, some of the people he went to school with, who are busy at other things today off in the Persian Gulf. Lou Olson, of course, eighth season at Arizona, quite a remarkable record, quite a remarkable thing he's done here with the basketball program. He's a Frank Lloyd Wright. He's a builder of programs. He's an architect. When he arrived, Keith, they were 1-17 in, in the Pac-10, and since then he has won four Pac-10 championships. The officials for today's ball game, three men, Richie Ballesteros, Charles Range, and Mark Reisling. It's a Pac-10 crew. Richie Ballesteros had the final game last year in the NCAA tournament. He's one of the premier zebras in America. And we're ready to go as Williams steps in against Leitner. Tip is taken by the Wildcats wearing the white. This is Matt Othick, and Bobby Hurley picks him up. Hurley plays defense as well as anybody, I think, of this generation with his feet. Well, he really moves his feet very quick, very intense, fights over the top of screens. They go inside to Williams, the first move of the game by the big man. It doesn't work. The rebound is put up by Chris Mills. It doesn't work. Williams has got it again, and he's loose underneath the basket, and he is fouled by Davis. That could be the dilemma for Duke all day long, Keith, trying to defend against the great size of Arizona. There's a look at the size. There's the jumper by Williams. It's a little brick. There's Chris Mills working on the offensive boards. Now here comes Stokes at 6'11". And now Williams says, let me get in the app. And he keeps it alive. And he goes up and he gets hammered from the back. Brian Williams will go to the line. Davis receding for the foul. If I had to pick my all Pac-10 team, he'd be my center right now. And up front, I'd go with Don McLean, even though he flies a lot. And then I'd go with Adam Keefe and in the backcourt, Harold Miner. And the best guard in the Pac-10, Terrell Brandon, Oregon. Arizona on the board off the first free throw to lead one to nothing. Full court press with Williams at the point. That's a new wrinkle for the Wildcats, but Duke breaks it very quickly. Go to Thomas Hill. Oh, what a star he has become. He has really been scintillating the last half of the season. Thomas Hill, a sophomore out of Lancaster, Texas. He can also play in a defensive end. He'll be checking head-to-head -head against Mills. Othick with Hurley on him, goes in the corner. Muehlbach had a shot, passed it up. Very aggressive man-to-man -man defense. They go inside for Williams, and the ball is stripped away from him. Thomas Hill rotated over to give him some help. It looks like uh, Brian Williams has come today with the same intensity that we saw in a UCLA game a couple of weeks ago. He was brilliant in that game. He was absolutely awesome. He had 34 points, 14 rebounds. Stokes feeds it outside. Mule box three. Back iron, no rebound. Hurley, here they come. Davis short with it. Gets the rebound to Hill. Grant can't get it. Stokes rebounds it. Two trying to beat. Arizona up the floor. Chris Mills, too hard. On the follow, you get a foul called on Chris. Weisling called it, may have anticipated it. Mills mostly missed contact on it. Mills was great in the Big Apple, the NIT. And from that moment on, it hasn't been the same. He got the gold trophy, the MVP, transferred from out of Kentucky. All right, Hurley will bring it up. Thomas Hill joining him in the backcourt. They lob it inside, and it's good to Grant Hill. A set play off the back screen, the toughest screen to try and defend, Keith, that back screen. Hope to the lead, 4-2. to two. His drive inside. Othick was pinned under the basket, tried to give it to Williams, didn't work. Now trying to be a little too spectacular. See, later can play on the perimeter as well as on the inside. Three-pointer won't go down. Rebound slapped around. Othick picks it up. Mule box in front, lob it inside, lobs too high, Williams, and Reisling calls his second foul of the ball game. Now let's join Farrell Miller. Keith, you've already mentioned that Arizona has a 60-game home win streak, and much of that success is due to a combination of great fan support, and simply put, this is their comfort zone. It's so much so that during the streak, they have managed to shoot 50% from the field while holding their opponents to only 38%. Matter of fact, earlier in the season on the road, they lost to California and Washington, turned around and beat these both these teams by 33 points. So, guys, I guess what Dorothy said must be true. There's no place like home. 
Well, when you've rolled off 60, and even though Christian Leitner indicated yesterday in conversation he had, they had no particular interest in it, I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski told me, I'm not going to use that to motivate my team. You better believe they're aware of that 60-game win streak. Lob it inside, Stokes. Stokes has hammered, but no foul as Richie's inside with him. Ballesteros disappears among all those trees, doesn't he? <laughs> He can really blow the whistle, though. He takes charge. He's not afraid to blow the whistle. Very Stokes up and no. Rebound Mills, yes. That's what they need out of Mills. Work the offensive boards, play on the defensive end. He's got to develop a better work ethic. Four, four times. Both teams playing very hard. Grant Hill takes it in. Hoffick picks it up. Ball is loose, but he controls it. And long lob pass down court to an open Brian Williams is too high and thrown away, and that was a wasted opportunity. Matt Muehlbach had the right idea, but certainly, as you look right here, the tail of the two teams. Wow, look at this right here. Arizona, when they're home, night and day, they lose to Washington and California on the road, and then it's blowout city when they play them here at McHale. Early gives it to Leitner. Hey, Leitner takes it in. It's partially blocked by Brian Williams, and Arizona's going to run it the other way. Williams has a message for Leighton, and not here, Christian. Chris Mills is fouled, and the foul goes to Grant Hill. Mike Krzyzewski, a tremendous leader, coached the, internet, the national team in the World Championship Games. In fact, he cut Mills, and he cut also Sean Rooks, who's on the bench. Offic. Can't hit it from outside. Gotta like this little guy, Keith. Plays so hard every time you put him on the floor. Makes some errors, makes some bad decisions, but he's a winner. Thomas Hill, too hard. Air ball, Leitner rebounds it. He's very patient inside. Schulbach gets out in front. You don't see that that often, where Duke doesn't hustle back defensively in transition. Arizona recognizes the laps and beats him down the court for the layup. 6-6. Six, six. Leitner walks. Christian's got to wait for the play to come to him. He's trying to force some things that aren't available. 15.55 to go in the first half. We're tied at 6. I invite you to stay tuned for an ABC News Gulf War update with Ted Koppel. Latest news and pictures from the front, 6.30 Eastern Time, here on ABC. Crowd up, roaring. Brian Williams has always had good games against Duke. In fact, when he was a freshman, a diaper dandy, and the best freshman in the ACC, he played on a Maryland team that upset Duke at Duke. I did the game, and he was really super that day. Othick goes inside with Thomas Hill checking him. Got a mismatch. Now to Chris Mills. They got Mills matched up against Bobby Hurley. That's what they wanted, and it's good for two. Well, they forced the switch defensively, and then they recognized the opportunity, and it was a mismatch size-wise, and Mills converts. Grant Hill out in front handling the ball. Right now, time he's through, he will set all kinds of records at Duke for assists. I would go to Big Hill inside against Mulebach. Oh. Hill slams it down. That was Davis from Davis. the big side. Brian Davis, Brian good Davis. athlete. Davis got in front of Stokes. Stokes was helpless. Wasn't a thing he could do about it except foul him and let him go. Well, a poor job of locking out. A little high, low right there. Great entry. Seen, taking advantage again of their size and charge. Oh. Piece of it by Brian Williams may have been just enough to keep it out of there. Grant Hill made a great cut to get close position, but couldn't convert. Williams again inside. Good feed to Mills. Brian Williams is playing outstanding post basketball. What a great look that was from the post position to the weak side to Mills. Wildcats, 14 to go, lead by four. And they love it here. Tremendous environment. Arizona and Duke, two of the real class programs in America. Billy McCaffrey will come into the ball game for Duke. 
Good shooting guard just as soon as there's a timeout. Leitner is outside for three. Doesn't get it. It's up on top, and that'll get the substitutes in. Also coming in for Duke will be Crawford Palmer at 6'9", 235. It really is amazing that Duke has had the kind of year they've had because they have one really big player as McCaffrey's on the floor now in Leitner. They have really no size. Last year they had Abdul Nabi to give them a good post player. This is the advantage right now for Arizona. Look at a great look inside by Williams. Diagonal makes that good look to Chris Mills. Khaled Reeves is in the ball game for Arizona now, number three at a backcourt position, and also in for the uh, Wildcats is Wayne Womack, number 30. Sets a good, solid screen for Reeves. He loses the ball. He's only a freshman, a true freshman, and now he comes back down to intercept the pass. Had a good job right there by Hurley reading the defense. Reeves loses the ball for a second successive time, and Hurley will put it up. No. Rebound, Leitner. Hurley said, what do you mean, Mr. Jackson? That was a pass. I set him up. Don't you believe it? It was. That was an air ball, baby, an air ball. Reeves now has lost the ball on two trips down the court. Mills handling it out in front. Womack is inside. He's got Leitner on him. Good spacing right now by Arizona offensively. Mills forces one. Sean Rooks is in the game for the Wildcats. Rebounds it to Reeves. Uh -huh. Got it. Malik Reeves will be a special player. He will be a star. He's getting better and better. The last game against California, they said their best game. He hit five three-point shots, Keith. Again, a four-point lead for the Wildcats. Thomas Hill gives it to Crawford Palmer. And now Palmer screens for Hill and a whistle. Mike Krzyzewski has decided to get some size on the floor to neutralize all the Giants for Arizona. And that's why you see the presence now of Crawford Palmer. See, watch Bobby Hurley. Tries to make the spectacular play. He'll look one way and pass the other. See, had no vision, and there's Reeves. He says, thank you, Mr. Hurley. And that's why his assist-to-turnover ratio is not what it should be. It's not even two to one. Womack getting that last foul. Sending Thomas Hill to the line. His dad is assistant athletic director in Oklahoma. And Calvin? In fact, his dad, Thomas Hill, also was an Olympian as we look at Christian Leitner on the sideline. 1972, he ran the hurdles in the Olympics. The other Hill's daddy is Calvin. Calvin, yeah. yeah. Football player, Dallas Cowboys, now working as an executive in the Baltimore Orioles ah! organization. Good guy. Known him a long time, and there's a whistle inside on the baseline. Sean Rooks is dinged for a foul as Palmer got inside position. Sean Rooks has lost his starting position, and the reason he's lost it is for two major factors. One, not rebounding enough, and two, not playing with enough intensity. Scoring-wise, Keith, he can score with the best big people down in the low boxes. Thomas Hill leaves now, and Grant Hill comes back for Duke. Grant at 6'7", 205 from Reston, Virginia. Now here's Cheryl. Well, Keith and Dick, I was talking to Sean Rooks yesterday before practice, and he said that he's very frustrated right now. He's been playing extremely well offensively, but like you said, the coaches wanted him to really pound the boards. But one thing he can't seem to do right well today is try to overcompensate. He needs to play his game, and let's see if he can do that. 14-13 ball game as Reeves handles the ball out in front. Clay Buckley is in now for Duke. Getting size, it's very important for the Blue Devils. Rooks can't get it to go down and rebounded by Grant Hill. Good matchup right here, Hurley and Reeves. They know each other from the metropolitan New York area. Reeves was one of the big stars in New York City last year, and Hurley at St. Anthony's in Jersey City. They never played against each other, he said, except in some all-star stuff. Right, never head-to-head, -head, high school-wise. Grant Hill, air ball, rebound, Womack. That's the one area Grant Hill has to constantly work on to develop better perimeter shooting ability. Because he can handle the ball as smooth as can be. There's a foul. Foul is on uh, Palmer. Palmer gives him a physical presence on the floor. They're going to get two big guys that are going to help him next year, Keith, from out in your way down to California, Cherokee Parks and Eric Meek. I asked Mike yesterday how in the world he's going to keep everybody happy. The 
those numbers tell you where we are with this one, and it probably won't be a whole lot different all the way to the end. Well, I think right now, as we look at the top 10, ooh, you top there. I think maybe overrated. They haven't beaten the top 20 team. I know Rick Majerus is doing a great job, but they haven't played against the Giants. In fact, they lost to Michigan. And maybe 10's a little high for them. But this game is so significant for that number one seed. They need to get that number one seed in the East because Arkansas has the Southeast, UNLV the West, and Ohio State the Midwest. Elliot Reeves uh, handling the ball here. And whistles, and you stop them inside. You've got holding. Next Sunday, we'll be back in Columbus, Ohio, with the Ohio State Buckeyes, who survived by a breath and a lot of controversy coming out of that Minnesota game uh, last night. But you'll see Michigan State at Columbus, and uh, also we'll have for you Minnesota and Michigan. Clem Haskins, I think, when he goes to his mailbox, there might be a telegram and a letter from Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten. He really jumped all over the officials in the media. Oh! Colin Reeves forces a shot in traffic, but he gets away with it and makes it. And it's one of those things is the coach is yelling, no, 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 good shot. <laughs> He's very strong with his penetration, Keith, very strong. 16-13, Arizona leads as Palmer puts it up, and it's partially deflected, and Brian Williams, back in the ball game, swoops it off. Ah, uh, see, that's his problem. Out the goalies tries to make the spectacular. Don't be shocked if Lute Olsen doesn't bring him to the sideline. Early in his career, Lute Olsen was very upset with Arthur trying to make the big play. Well, there's no excuse for that. I mean, uh, they just threw that thing away. He's been watching Anthony. Lute Olsen, former Big Ten coach. You and I were talking about Clement Haskins today before the game. We'll get to that point. Walking violation. Want to get a hold instead. That's Palmer. That'll be uh, his third if it is. You know, you and I were talking to Richie Ballesteris, and he said sometimes officials have to eat the whistle when they make an error. In that game, we talked about Ohio State and Minnesota. They made an obvious error, and sometimes you have to eat your whistle and let a coach do some screaming. Yeah, but when you run out on the edge of the court to leave your coaching area, you're Doing mandated something. to blow the tee, I guess, and uh, that's what caused it. Here, the Arizona Wildcats having a hard time getting the ball to where they want it. They turn it over, McCaffrey puts it up for three, and Reeves rebounds it for the Wildcats. I really like Reeves. I like his ball handling skills, his range as a shooter. <laughs> Grant Hill just slaps it down, but hits the sideline. I tell you what, Colin Reeves is getting a pretty good dose of uh, basketball savvy right now because he's turned it over three times and maybe even four if you wanted to stretch it. He's a little slow releasing the jump shot. In fact, in today's paper, Lute Olsen said that Reeves is releasing it just a little quicker. Look at the field goal percentage right now. Duke only 28% and Arizona 41%, and that's because of intense defense. Very sloppy play right now. But then Duke likes to fill all of the, the passing lanes. They're not going to give you a passing lane if they can help you. That's what makes you go over the top, and they just turn it over again. That's an example right there of really closing off, as you just said, Keith, the passing lane. Thomas Hill into the corner. McCaffrey puts it up. He's good out there, but he's had two now, and they haven't gone down. Rebound to Brian Davis, and he missed the layup. Brian Davis had lost his starting job, got it back. Did a tremendous defensive job in the last game against Rodney Monroe, held him to four points in the second half. Stokes fumbles a hard pass, and the Blue Devils get it again. Arizona, in losing by two points at Duke last year, had 22 turnovers. And they're going to do at least that many today. What's playing like this? Duke is really having trouble offensively because of the size. And another factor, Duke is not converting off the transition, off the turnover. Williams almost lost it. Arizona's got nine turnovers already in the ball game, and we got oh, that's an offensive foul. to play in the first half. And Othick is right now a little bit out of control. He threw the ball into the cheap seats, and now he runs over a guy. That's the big question mark among a lot of people. Can the Arizona guards take them to the promised land, the championship in the Final Four? As you see, Syracuse with a blowout, Oklahoma State. Come back of the year, Eddie Sutton. Georgia Tech, bye-bye Louisville. They're not going to have a 500 season. And look at this one. Wisconsin nips Northwestern. And who cares? NBA now doesn't mean nothing. Let's go up the season. Williams from behind blocked the shot of Hurley. Hurley whipped off it. He had him beat cold and was headed for two. But Williams stepped across with that 6'11 frame and his leaping ability and just slapped it out. 
And they're really giving him trouble inside. Only teasing him about the NBA, but certainly when the playoffs start, that's when it's fantastic. Leitner, two points. He's got a good touch for a big guy. I want to say get well to his mom. She had back surgery. Arizona ball, 16-15, Wildcats by one, 849 to play first half. Mike Krzyzewski was so high on Brian Davis and his ability to listen. Mike Krzyzewski, if you had a coach today, the hottest coach in America would be that guy right there as you look at the recent battles between these clubs. The series is 2-2 as Reeves is back in, but that other game was played in 1962, and Hurley putting the pressure on his whistle to buy Mark Wrestling for a foul. Yeah, you don't want to reach in. Bobby Hurley, early in his career, did a lot of crying. In fact, I picked him on my wall. Bill Lampier team likes to cry a lot, along with Don McLean, would be the captain of that team. As we look at the turnovers, Arizona with 10, Duke with 4. You wouldn't want Hurley to be too big, not with that uh, temperament. <laughs> It'd be a, one tough guy. He's such a competitor. Williams is climbing inside. Well, they get the ball down inside. He almost brought it down to where he neutralized himself and became a 5'11 player. But then he got that explosion and took it up strong. Leitner gets loose from Stokes. Missed it. Leitner gets it back. Williams fouls him. There's an example for you young kids out there. Known as the ball fake. The ball fake is what really created his opportunity. Now watch, they're gonna dump it down to Brian Williams. Now he's gonna bring the ball down and make himself like 5'11". See, he's 6'11", little, he brings it down, but then he gets that explosion back up and jams it. From the slam cam, that's how my dunk looks, Keith. <laughs> what is this, I saw you dribbling behind your back. I can't juggle. I you even got on camera local news last night dribbling behind your back. Oh, really? Yeah. Did they have an eye? I can't jump over a telephone book. Woman forgot your name. Though. Did she really? <laughs> That's good for your ego. That's almost like calling ABC up and you call and you say, hey, this is Dick Vitale. <laughs> Who are you? Do you work here? 1860. <laughs> now one point ball game. Hurley comes out, puts the pressure on Reed. We're going to a half court trap. Now. Actually, three quarter trap. Mills, on go, falls high and out of bounds. Rock Duke should make one extra pass right there in that sequence, and they would have had a layup. Duke rotated into a 1 3 1 trap. Mike Shishev loves playing against tough people, and so does Lute Olsen. They don't want to play the cupcakes. Inside, Stoke. Got it inside too easily into the baseline side, and no one rotated to give any help to take away his angle to the basket. Coach is a seven-foot sophomore. The conference is very young. Most of the teams have everyone back in the Pac-10. Grant Hill can't get it. Matt Mulebach rebounds it. This guy's been a consistent player in his career. Davis checking him all the way down. Back to Reeves. Missed the shot. Rebound Hurley. Let's see the decision he makes. Brian Davis. Good decision right there. A little bounce pass. 45-degree angle. Excellent play by Davis and by Mr. Hurley. I notice you like Hurley, you like these tough little guys. Reeves peeled him pretty good on that screen, didn't he? Yeah, he ran him right into the big screen. Stokes is gonna be short with that one. Womack with a nice move, and he is fouled. Womack is fouled by Thomas Hill. Wayne Womack, an excellent player off the bench. Thomas Hill was one of the premier players off the bench. Until now, he's earned a starting role. There's that togetherness by Duke, always playing as an unselfish team. I got a little trivia I want to play for the people listening. Who was the last team to beat Arizona here? They've won 60 in a row. And if you know, write Keith Jackson, care of ABC, <laughs> and he'll send you a gift. Why me? You got more gifts than I do. Basketball, man. Oh. <laughs> I'll let you know in a few minutes who it is. Try and think about it. Big, the big hill is up to surround that rebound. Happened in 1987 here in March in an NCAA tournament first round game. Thomas Hill. Nice, nice touch. Nice. Excellent touch. Came off the screen. Good look. High percentage shot. Right now the Cameron Crazies would go bananas. They'll all be standing. Love that environment in Chris Mills 
Pinned in the corner by Thomas Hill. Inside ball rolls around, picked up by Duke. There's just not much room when they get you pinned back in that corner. No shot was available right there by Mills. Oh, that's a that's foul. That's a foul. Silly foul, Reeves. Pilot has come down there and had his pocket picked about four times now. He's probably getting a little frustrated. Lute also wants to call the offensive foul, but he has to know better than that, Paul. As soon as you reach in with that hand, whether you make contact or not, the whistle's going to be blown. He played with Derek Phelps in high school. Rice the King High School, Derek now at North Carolina. Both teams have seven team fouls now. Rooks is in, Stokes is out, changed for the Wildcats. Another former teammate of Reeves is Jamal Faulkner, now starring for Arizona State, who I really believe is the best freshman in the Pac-10. Early misses, rebound Rooks. Last game, Duke struggled on a free throw line. They were 11 for 25, 44% against NC State. Duke is leading by one, 21 to 20, as Rooks takes it in, and he is fouled. I really believe Sean Rooks has to work a little harder on a defensive end, and he could become such a star in college basketball. He has that born instinct of knowing how to score. Grant Hill, second personal. I'll tell you, his cash register will go up and up and up, too, if he starts playing a little harder on the defensive end and also in rebounding. Well, he had to beat back uh, an asthma problem when he showed up here as a freshman. He had trouble playing for more than uh, 10 minutes at a time, but he has apparently whipped that. Interesting story. If we look at Grand Hill, Kubek, it was about Bob Hurley. You ready for this? During the summer, he was waking up and he was dreaming. He was dreaming that a white shark was chasing him and said he couldn't sleep. The sharks were chasing him. Wouldn't you? And he finally went, he finally went to Kubek and he says, Kubek, you gotta help me out. You're my buddy. Kubek was taking a course in dreaming. And he said, you know what? You're thinking of UNLV and Jerry Carcadian and that 103-73 battle. Forget about it. Wipe it out. He said he finally got rid of that dream. Dream interpretation of three or a four hour class. <laughs> John, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, been a hard season for Denny. Hey, there's some of the candidates for Cameron Crazies. Look at these two wackos with their basketball heads. Well, again, on Hurley, air ball. He gets us everywhere he goes. 21 21. So why did they pick on me? I'm just a nice little guy trying to get a college education. His dad is some coach key. St. Anthony's High School, they're number two in the nation now, 25 and one. Zone defense, Arizona rotates out of the man-to-man -to, -man to a matchup zone. Kubek is in the ball game, first time for the Blue Devils. Rooks gets the ball out of bounds. This Rook is will a keep it. good, tough game to have to get ready in two weeks for the NCAA tournament. As you still see Duke shooting only 29%, Arizona 41. And that's the side. Cross the top to Thomas Hill. That's a three. A, that's a great pass. Years ago, coaches would scream, don't throw the ball cross court. And there's an example where that is one of the best passes today in attacking the zone. The diagonal cross court pass, better known as the skip pass, as Kim Butler would say, our producer. That pass by Rooks, a little bit late, slapped away. A lot of hands flying around, especially hands wearing blue. Uh, hesitation by Hurley should have gotten it to Kubek a little sooner. I mean, the late one. They go over the top again. Two back in the corner against Chris Mills. And on the rebound, it's off. Leitner, Arizona ball. Kubik's had some real bright moments in the Duke uniform. He has not been consistent in his career. 24-21, Duke. Matryoshevsky was a captain. Served five years in the military after graduating in 69 at West Point. Played three years under a guy by the name of Robert Knight. Brooks has got Reeves wide open. Don't go down. Rebound. Rooks loses. And a foul. Oh, there's no doubt about that foul by Rooks. He can't cry about that one. Come on, Sean. You're going to make my all cry, baby team. Don't cry on that one. That's as obvious. I could see it, and I got the one eye. It's my left eye. It's my left side of the court. I'm blinding that eye, and I can see that foul, Keith. 24-21, Blue Devils by three at 4.54 to play and a half. The play has been sloppy. Been good defense, yes, but it's also been sloppy. Lute Olsen was disappointed with the performance against Georgia Tech. He felt the environment was very flat. There weren't any bands, any cheerleaders, and it really became contagious with the players. And they did an excellent job of shutting down Kenny Anderson. Casey Schmidt comes in for Arizona, replacing Reeves. He is their, probably their best shooter outside. Yeah, he's a designated three-man. They're looking for him to shoot the three-point shot. 
Don't worry about this guy. Khaled Reeves will be a star. Put that down. He will be a star in Arizona. One plus one for Thomas Hill. Good. And the first one. It's amazing to see his improvement. He's Thomas got nine Hill. Points already. Uh, his improvement as a player, Keith, from when he entered the school. They all thought he was the third best recruit between, behind Hurley and McCaffrey. And he's now becoming a star potential player with defensive ability and offensive ability. And that's a credit to Shashevsky, Gaudet, Tommy Amica, Mike Bray. They do an excellent job of teaching. Banged around and came out. And the Wildcats will bring it up. See, Hurley likes to fan you to the sideline and beat you to a spot. Bad pass by Stokes. Get it to your point guard. He's got the trail man. Oh, right there, a better decision than hitting the trail man. He says, I'm taking a right to the goal myself. Hurley's first basket of the ball game. See, watch him now. He's trying to fan him to the sideline. See how he brings him to the sideline and beats him to a spot, makes him pick the dribble up. Arizona just not passing the ball well at all. The Duke's got him going just exactly the way they want him to go right now. Really created that by fanning to the sideline. There are two potential entries when you tell your guard. You can either funnel to the middle of the court or fan to the sideline. If you got a great shot blocker, you like to funnel to the middle. In their case, they're fanning to the sideline. They bring Othic back, but uh, Matt hadn't been all that great today either. Mills is going to get a breather. Williams is out of the ball game. He's getting a breather now to come back. Remember, he's got two personal. Arizona is a dynamite team. Their backcourt is executing and playing well. When their backcourt's playing well, they are dynamite. Buckley replaces Leitner. That's Christian's first rest of the ball game. 27-21 Duke. And on the line, Brian Davis. Buckley doesn't get any playing time at all. In fact, Buckley's going to make my all airport team. You know, one of those guys, he looks pretty at the airport and gets no PT from the coaches. His dad was a player at Duke, their co-captain. His dad played uh, back in the early 60s when he went to the Final Four, and he had yeah, guys like I remember. Like, you know, Jeff Mullins and that guy. Yeah. In fact, he played against those UCLA teams when it all started for the Wizard of Westwood, John Wooden. Comes off, and the rebound cleared by Stokes for Arizona. Stokes is a good defensive player. He's got to assert himself a little bit more offensively. See, they got a great mismatch against Kubek. They got to throw the ball high and lob right. Ah, should have flipped it up to Stokes inside. Now he's looking. Oh, that's an offensive foul. They could call on Williams. Oh, they could call an offensive foul on Williams. That's three. Got to get him out now. He's hot under the collar, but there's no doubt about the call. Right in front of Richie Ballesteros. In fact, point of emphasis by the officials this year in the manual that comes out, it's post-play, trying to establish that swim stroke. Lute Olsen's done a great job everywhere he's been, from Long Beach State out to Iowa. Now watch it right here. Now see, he's a swim stroke. Now watch, he's going to throw him right to the deck of the swim stroke. Is that obvious, Keith? Well, I think the foul, actually, you could have called it earlier if you wanted to, couldn't you? Yeah, I thought so. Duke's not having much luck at the foul line, though. Brian Williams, though, has had a real consistent year. Much better than last year. Should stay in school, though, hearing rumors that he may decide to come out. Blue Devils can't buy. There's a foul over the back on Kubek. Game has been sloppy because of the tenacity of both teams. We haven't seen that real good execution. The one area you're seeing here with Duke, they're really going to their bench playing people they normally don't play, like Buckley and getting some minutes out of Palmer as well. Chris Mills is coming back and will replace uh, Casey Schmidt. And a guy to really miss Arizona, Judd Bushler. Wasn't a star player, now playing in the NBA, but he was consistent. Every day you knew what to expect out of Bushler. Free throws, Duke is 7 of 13. Arizona is 3 of 5. Brooks on the line, that's too long. Rebound goes to Stokes. Air ball, right to Hurley. Brooks, Othic, little acting doesn't get Thomas Hill a call. Othic hot dogging, throws it away. Othic was looking for Mills to run the 45 degree angle and cut to the basket. He went to the three point line. Well, if you think 60s, 60s.
60 games is a long win streak. Consider what Kentucky accomplished between 1943 and 55. They won 129 home games. So Keith and Dick, I think the Arizona Wildcats have a long ways to go to catch the Kentucky Wildcats. Yeah, but the Baron owned the barn back in those days, and most of the horses that went in it. <laughs> hey, we're going to give an answer to my trivia question. The last team to beat them. Leighton, they're back, has it inside, puts it up, missed it. Mulebach rebounds it. Got the ball in deep. As soon as we have a dead ball, I will give you the team that beat Arizona. The turnovers. So that's good basketball. Cutting without the ball, Bills. Excellent look. The team is Texas El Paso, March 1987, with a guard by the name of Tim Hardaway. Now one of the brilliant point guards in the NBA. Leitner screens for Hurley. Hurley has it slapped back into his face, picked up. Give to McCaffrey, and he won't go down. Rebound, Othic. Othic down to Rooks, pick it in. That's a big dunk. Dipsy do, Dunkaroo, Sean Rooks. That broke an 11 to 1 run by Duke. And the house is standing again. Yeah, most of all, it's brought the crowd into the game. It's been kind of passive and quiet. Now they're alive. Thomas Hill shoots, forces the shot. Rebound, Leitner kept up again. No, Rooks slaps it out of there and controls it. Leitner really having tough luck inside, getting some good post position. There's a foul on Thomas Hill. Mark Leishman with the ball again. Bobby Hurley now is going to go to the goal. Falls out of bounds. Comes back from inbounds. Well, see, he was out of bounds in that sequence and then came back on the court, but he had a foot planted on the floor and came back, and that was a legal play. Mills to the line. Mills. Arizona with 16 turnovers in the game. Mills hits that one. Othic has five of the turnovers. Duke, on the other hand, has turned it over only four times. Mills has got to really pick up his game. He can become the factor. He's got to get a little bit more emotional, a little bit more intense. Sean Rooks is another guy that's too important to this team. They certainly have the personnel to be one of the top five teams in America. Chris Mills trying to get within one and uh, 28, 27, Duke. Time remaining. Two minutes. Now listen to the crowd now. It's 28-21, but they've ripped off six straight. It's a beautiful place. Absolutely a gorgeous place. Oh, see, he's upset they missed him. Layla was wide open. The guy's sitting on his back. I'd slide the ball into Layton. He's, he's got, got Stokes on his hip again. Yeah, they're missing him inside. That's Any, nothing. Anytime you get an outstanding big player in deep, with good post position, you got to drop the ball into him. That's at a tough afternoon. Othic second person. See, Leighton now against 41. He's going to establish post position. Now he wants him to get the angle to the baseline. He said, come on. Now he's going to say, well, if you don't, I'm going to go screen and then pop out after the screen. He's saying, bring me the rock. Get me the rock. Deron Johnson is in. Chris Mills is out for Arizona. He gave me an education today, Deron Johnson. He said, Mr. Vital, he said, don't get Sean Elliott mad at you. It's not Chola. It's Choya High School in Arizona in Tucson. It's Choya. Did you know that? Yes. I didn't know that. I didn't know it. I learned something today. Is it La Jolla or La Jolla? La Jolla. <laughs> Twenty. 27 for Arizona early now. Makes it 29 for Duke. Two point lead. And at 140 to play in the first half. Duke really struggling on a free throw line. Khalid Reeves back in. Buhlbach, bigger than McCaffrey, shoots over him and hits it. Now Buhlbach with the range of three point shot. Arizona back to the lead by a point, 30 to 29. I've always liked Muehlbach. He's one of those solid players. Got a 
watch it. the five second violation. Reeves dives and you get a jump ball. Possession Duke. Arizona playing some really tough defense. See, there's at times where Bobby Hurley overhandles the basketball and they don't get enough ball movement or player movement. And then they're easy to defend. Now, see right here, he's going to play with the basketball. He's looking for some people to get open. Now, here's Reeves going to beat him. Good foot positioning by Reeves, Reeves defensively. And then the hustle for the loose ball. See, a narrow offensive set. Mike Krzyzewski wants him to have the ball in his hands. He's their leader, their quarterback. Now, Reeves. Six seconds to go in the first half of play as Leitner goes to the line with an opportunity to improve Duke, Duke's posture at the free throw line today. Well, over 44 percent Wednesday night against North Carolina State at Cameron Indoor Stadium, and that's really not Duke basketball, especially this guy. This guy's been an excellent free throw shooter in his career, even though he missed a big one, 77, 75, or 101, but he was a freshman against Arizona with one second to go. Makes two there. 31-30, Blue Devils. That was at the Metal Lions, and then he came back after that game a month later against Alonzo Mourning and had a brilliant game to beat Georgetown. Reeves handling the ball, gives it up to Mulebach. Mulebach had an opening right down the lane and didn't take it. And there's a foul on uh, McCaffrey. Mark Reisling has called virtually all the fouls in this first half. Yeah, he's trying to be real aggressive on the court. Look at Billy McCaffrey. He and Bob Hurley look like they should be delivering the mail, the local mail, I mean, or basically delivering a local paper. Playing big brother Ed, a pretty good uh, wide out up at Stanford. And his sister plays for Georgetown basketball. I would think Ed will go pretty high in the draft. NFL. He had a great game against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. In fact, his performance helped Stanford to pull that big upset in South Bend. Three-digit clock here, 28.9 seconds. Remember when they got beat by LSU? We did the game as he misses yeah. the free throw. Their perimeter people really had a poor performance that game as well, and that's when Mr. Shaquille O'Neal let the nation know that he was America's premier talent. We're tied at 31. Wilbach, a good free throw shooter. Leitner can play on the perimeter as well. Looks at Mike Krzyzewski, says one, yes. I think it's a great way of toughening your team during the course of the season like Duke going on a road in this kind of environment, getting ready for the NCAA in two weeks. And the Duke bench has been getting a lot of playing time, tough playing time, too, and they've been delivering. They want a double stack. They want to dump it inside the Leitner. Brian Davis will travel. He jumps in the triple threat position, which means he can shoot, he can drive, or he can pass. But he walks in the ball, and Mike Krzyzewski, the captain, looks on. 3.2 seconds now for Arizona in this possession. Stokes back. Mike's a great guy to interview, uh, Keith. He's just a tremendous, straightforward guy, very honest, a man of tremendous integrity. Chris Mills, got to let it go. That's short. And the half is over. So at halftime, we're right where we started, all even, 31-31. And we'll be back with ABC's College Basketball after this message and the word from our ABC station. ABC's College Basketball. Brought to you by the greatest sports performance shoe in the world. The Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. And by Ford Motor Company. Our game has been tied seven times in the first half. Four lead changes. Neither team playing very well offensively. Both teams 
banging the tar out of each other defensively. Keith, I think if you were Mike Krzyzewski and you could shoot 27% on the road, 10 for 36, and have a chance to win to be tied against a team that's won 60 in a row, you'd say, I can't believe it. Look at the rebound totals. Arizona doesn't shock us, 29 to 17. Turnovers, though, Arizona 16, Duke only five, and the real, real difference there, and that's why UNLV is super. When you turn the ball over against the running Rebels, they make you pay big time because they score. Duke did not take advantage of the 16 turnovers. Duke has 10 steals. Leitner has five of those. Leitner has 10 points. Mills has 10 points to lead the respective teams in scoring. Hey, I think you think you were telling me off the air. Maybe Las Cruces, tough spot for UNLV. Oh, I guarantee you. Oh, it's tough for anybody. Tomorrow night. You know, they, they lost there last year. They got 29 in a row on New Mexico State. I'm going up to Las Cruces. I can't wait to get there. Are you going to drive me up there? No. Four hours? No. I'm going to drive to Kerfrey. Saved by William. He's got three fouls, remember now, as you've got Mills and Mulebach, Hawking, Williams, and Stokes on the floor for Arizona. Mills puts it up, and Mills is fouled by Thomas Hill. Christian Leitner out. Ryan Davis, Grant Hill, and Bobby Hurley on the floor for the Duke Blue Devils. Chris Mills got in a one-on-one -on -one situation on a wing and drew the contact from Hill. But had he reversed the ball and they swung it to the other side, they had a great entry inside to Brian Williams, who was sealing really well offensively. Thomas Hill with that foul, now three. Palmer has three. And uh, Brian Williams, the only Wildcat with three. Mills played on an amazing high school team. His teammate was Sean Higgins, now playing in the NBA, who left school early. Wife said time and time again, he and Marcus Liberty should have stayed in school. 31-31 tie is broken now with that free throw as Arizona goes to a one-point lead. Grant Hill will take it inside. And they call a foul. Chris Mill. Grant Hill has great body control, excellent hang time as he twists and turns down the lane. That's reminiscent of his dad. That's a reminiscent of Calvin taking the big skin for the Dallas Cowboys. He used to spot openings like this. Look at him seal, hang, twist. He's going to be a great one, as you said earlier, Keith. He's going to be a special player at Duke. Yeah, but he's a, he's a baby. Freshman, true freshman, 6'7, 205. He'll probably, by the time he's a junior, Play at 220, 215 he, at least. He was one of the top five freshmen in America in most polls last year. See Bobby Hurley bringing him to the sideline. And he comes back the other way on him. He was trying to lead him to the sideline, fan him to the sideline. Good pass inside to Brian Williams, and he is fouled by Grant Hill. Well, the Duke Blue Devils live in Durham, North Carolina. Tonight we got Bull Durham, the baseball movie. Oscar nominee Kevin Costner, Susan Sarandon, starring in the comedy that was so much fun to see. It's at 9 Eastern, 8 Central Time, the ABC Sunday Night Movie. That was, was the most famous uh, uh, Bull Durham, not Bull Durham, most famous Durham baseball player. I don't know. Oh, I know. Wait, wait, wait. Roger Ace Craig. Parker. Ace Parker. Oh, Ace Parker. What about Roger Craig? Didn't he come from Durham? I think Roger Craig, the manager of the Giants, came from there as well. I'm a baseball nut. No, Ace, Ace Parker, Parker. Though, was, uh, he's a legend. Around. We'll give you that one. The Durham <laughs> Bulls was the name of the team. They used to go watch him. Was good Brian move. Davis got loose and he's fouled. Didn't get the basket, but Stokes whacked him. Here's Cheryl Miller. Well, you guys, this was the thoughts from the coaches coming out of uh, the first half for Duke. Defensively, they felt very good. They were pleased with their rebounding efforts. This half looked for them to slow down the tempo and exercise a little more patience offensively. For Arizona, simply too many turnovers. They were also happy with their defense. But their big thing, get the ball down low to the big fellas. Just like Southern Cal did with Cheryl Miller. Get the ball to Cheryl. I thought you were going to the Iditarod, too. <laughs> That's where Jack Aroot packed up his knapsack, his TP, all of his uh, cold weather clothes and took off. Cheryl's been doing analyst work for our regional telecast. 
Back should with be, us. Should be sending me to the sideline. Look at Mike. Look at Hurley working on Austin. 36-34, Duke leads. He loves to play defense. Pass inside to Brian Williams, fouled again. And it's on Brian Davis. Brian Williams has to just play basketball. He's starting to talk a little bit too much on the floor, nodding his head, looking at officials. Brian's got to play basketball, not impersonate Don McLean. He has an excellent touch. Started his career on the Bob Wade at Maryland. He's one of the premier freshmen in the nation. He's been a traveling man. Played at like three different high schools. In fact, he and Hoffman played together in Vegas uh, over, uh, they played at Bishop Gorman High School. Even again at 36. Davis found the hole, missed the shot, rebound Hoffman. Ahead the mill. Hoffick had a tough first half at five turnovers. Nice play, Mulebach. That's a great defensive play, like a defensive back. Ronnie Lott right there. Hoffick open. That's what they need out of their guards. The perimeter jumper will make life easy for their big people. 39-36. First point of the game for Hoffick. Inside Leitner on the baseline is fouled by Stokes, his second personal foul. Saturday, ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour. $150,000 Fairlanes Open. Then at 4.30, 3.30 Central, Riddick Bowe and Terrell Biggs will go after each other. Young heavyweights, Bowe the younger. Then you got Herschel and Barry and Pepper and Jerry and a whole bunch of them in the Jeep Superstars. And the start of the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, Saturday here on ABC Sports. Duke is really having a tough time on a free throw line in their last two games. Christian made an excellent cut to the basket, good diagonal move against the two Giants, both against Stokes and Williams. Got one of the two. 39-37 ball game and 18 minutes to go. You young kids, watch the balance of Hurley defensively. His stands, he midpoints, he sees ball, you man. I remember the first time I saw him, it struck me how, how well he played with his feet. Brian Williams. Oh, the big fella says, hey, baby, this is Jam City. They love it here in Tucson. Good pass, shot by Thomas Hill. Hill did a great job recognizing the hole in the defense, slid in, caught the ball, squared his body, and shot the little jump shot. Mulebach kind of running the show right now for the Wildcats. Duke hedged on defense, Leighton stepping out. Thomas Hill down for a moment, time called as Thomas took a hard goal. Ballester has called that timeout in behalf of Thomas Hill. Ryan Williams has really worked a lot harder this year to get post position. Look at him right now, trying to lock inside, sitting down real low. Look, he's going to beat Leitner to the spot, and now he's got the great baseline look, and no one rotates over. Don't stick your tongue on me, Brian. Come on now, Michael Jordan. <laughs> he does get wound up. He had four points playing 10 minutes in the first half. He's got six points in three minutes here in the second half. Lute Olsen's done an amazing job with Williams, developing some work ethic, developing intensity on the floor. See, they're in that matchup zone defense now. Neil McCarthy of New Mexico State plays a great matchup. Grant Hill tries to use a Leitner pick, can't get it. Hurley shot, no, and rebounded by Mulebach. Hurley shoots the three-point shot a lot better when he's directly on top of the circle. Oh! Mills to the outside. Mills has been pretty quiet today. Almost loses the ball. He's too nonchalant for me. Too passive, Chris. He's on the baseline. And you got a blocking call against Thomas Hill. Close. He's, he's got all the talent, too. 
His freshman year at Kentucky, let him in rebound in, was an outstanding scorer as well. Hey, isn't it a great story that he's something coming back yeah. like he has at yeah. Oklahoma State? Four fouls now on Thomas Hill. So he's got to come out of there, and Billy McCaffrey comes in to replace him. Billy McCaffrey's been struggling shooting the ball. Thomas Hill's been a real star. Mike Krzyzewski can go on hour and hour about Thomas Hill and his development. Chris Mills takes it inside, can't get it. Rebound up there by Williams, won't go down, and a foul on Mills. Leighton also has ability to rip the ball off the glass and penetrate with the dribble up the court. In fact, Duke loves dribble penetration in their half-court game. Mills has got three now to go with Williams. 16-18 to go in the game, 41-39. Arizona leads a 60-game home winning string on the line. That's an amazing number, Keith. When you think about the parity in college basketball, Lou Dolson should be so proud. 60 in a row at home. There's that zone defense protecting their big people as well. Hurley, got it. He got the good look at the basket. That's been the one wrap on Bobby Hurley. Can he shoot the long-range jump shot? His brother Danny can shoot it. He's going to Seton Hall. Might be player of the year this year in New Jersey. Duke back to a one-point lead at 42-41, and Charlie Raines bristled it. Look at Hurley doing a little coaching with Charlie Raines. Look, look at Bobby going to do a little coaching. He learned from Papa. <laughs> they have a junior at his high school named Roderick Rhodes, and a lot of people say Rhodes and Jason Kidd are the two best juniors in America, and Kentucky is in a hunt with both of them, and some people say Rhodes will definitely visit Arizona and Ohio State. One-point lead for the Devils. We've got 15-40 to play in the ball game. 41-42. Duke has the 42. Well, the Hoosiers are getting mad at someone after losing that game to Iowa at home. What a great win for Iowa. Winning at Bloomington. Here right now, Wake Forest really putting a hurt on Clemson. They, uh, they must have found something. You know that? Uh, the Deacons. They got a great freshman by the name of Rodney Rogers. In fact, I'm going to be picking my old diaper band. He's best five in America freshman. You better believe Rodney Rogers will be on the team. Williams has got it inside. Put the shoulder in the Laker and got away with it. He got away with it, but that was an excellent move, too, Keith. What I like is his ball fake and a head fake. Those are two fakes for your young kids to work on. A ball fake and a head fake. See the 1-1-3 one, one, matchup. McCaffrey misses. Up for the rebound, Brian Williams. He holds it until he can get it to the quick man. 43-42, Arizona by one. In the Stokes. He got a roll. They go into their two big people. They alternate. First they go into Williams. Then they come back with the other seven-footer Stokes. And the crowd stands and gets jubilant. And Arizona goes to the zone and come away with the ball. Right now this basket will have this place explode if they score here. I slide it into Williams. He wants it against Leighton. Gives it up to Stokes. And Stokes is fouled by Grant Hill. Arizona really executing a lot better now in their half-court offense. The offensive efficiency rating would be a lot higher here in the last five minutes than earlier in the game. Grant Hill, three fouls. Thomas Hill, four fouls. Crawford Palmer, three for Duke. Grand Hill came in and heralded like the Supers down in North Carolina. Charlie Pierce did a tremendous article about their program in the National. And I'll tell you what, Keith, you better believe that those freshmen are not playing now, but they will become an outstanding team at North Carolina. Well, I don't think what was the uh, incoming people at Mike Krzyzewski signed, uh, they're not going to concede anything over there in Durham. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Cherokee Parks will really help this team. Big 6'11", very active player. They'll give them some balance between their perimeter and their baseline. Four-point lead for Arizona, 46-42. See, McCaffrey can come, become big now against the zone defense. they got to find a gap and get it to McCaffrey. Davis takes it away from you, but back to Leitner. Nice pass by Hill into Leitner. So the one good asset they have at Duke, they can all handle the basketball, they're into the game, very intelligent players. Grant Hill is so bright on the floor, as is Brian Davis. 
Look at Leighton now. He's going to slide on a baseline. He's going to get right into the seam, catches the bounce pass, and jams. <laughs> Offensive That's foul. That's a foul. Othic. Good call by Charlie Range. Matt has had a tough day. His dad was a coach. Roland yeah. coached at Wichita State. He's got three personal fouls now to go with Mills and Williams. Lute Olsen. That was pretty close, that last one. Frank Lloyd Wright, a real architect, sitting to his right. Tony McAndrew, former coach at Colorado State, does a great job in game preparation, as does Peter Gannett for Duke. Leitner outside with Othic on him. I mean, it's the ultimate mismatch, but it doesn't result in anything. That brings it up. Inside. A foul. A lot of fouling going on. And really attacking one another. Duke trying to beat him with quickness against the physical strength and the size of the two 6'11. Well, 6'11 and 7 feet. Grant Hill now with four. Thomas Hill with four. So you would have to say the Hill brothers have got a problem? They're in trouble, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, I know. Not related. <laughs> Grand Hill, is he going to be a good one? The four fouls right here, but this guy handles the ball well. He can even play the point guard position. Now he's big. 6'8", he's a big guy. Stokes, who's a seven-footer. Missed it. Rebound goes to Greg Kubek. Ball pass to Christian Leitner to the baseline. He travels. He walks with the ball, and that was a tremendous catch right there. The play wasn't there, though. They should not even have looked in that sequence to Leitner. Crawford Palmer is back. Or Duke. He's trying to buy some minutes out of Palmer for his size and his strength to neutralize the big guys inside. Stokes over Palmer. Good. Stokes. Excellent job of posting inside. You he doesn't know how good he can be. I exactly. Don't think. He's another one that's got to raise it a notch in terms of intensity. Arizona staff does an excellent job of teaching big man moves. Palmer double team sealed off. Back to Hurley. Bingo. Three. That was McCaffrey. McCaffrey I'm sorry, right there. Uh, McCaffrey. Yep. They look alike, I guess. 48-47. One point. Arizona lead. He's the guy that can hurt that zone, McCaffrey. They've got to find him in the gaps of that zone. Well, they had Williams sitting down in the box inside. There it is. Over Leitner. Won't go. Rebound, Hurley. To McCaffrey. See, right now they're going to show some patience against that zone. Get the ball in the hands of either Kubek to shoot it or McCaffrey. Leitner shot out of the corner, won't go down, and the rebound is off to William. No rebounding power at all when Leighton is shooting the ball from the baseline. Christian is there, big time rebounder inside. Well, there's three Wildcats there and no blue. See, look at Leighton, he's frustrated, he wants the ball. He says, please give me the ball. Look at the hands are up in the air. Kubek gets one. And Kubek can give him a little spark off the bench. That's a two-point lead for Duke. Off that three-pointer, his Kubek's first points of the game, and it's 50 to 48. And the reason they're leading is nothing to do with shooting the basketball, is their defensive ability, their defensive tenacity. There's a whistle. And a foul on McCaffrey. There's that old adage in coaching, Keith. If you play solid on the defensive end and you don't have a bad night defensively, you can hang and make up for the inefficient ability of shooting the ball. Well, that doesn't shock us. The one thing about Duke's defense, though, when it's working for them, they're starting their offense about 15 feet closer to the opposition basket than your average team. They really pressure on the ball. They really play great denial. They have four concepts to their defense. Pressure the ball one, two, deny on the wings, three, beat the cutter to the basketball, and four, finalized by blocking out. Stokes on the line. He hasn't had a lot of luck there today, and he still hasn't. He's really struggling on the free throw line. Violation on Leighton. Yeah. Gives him another yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Another one and one. Could be big in a close game. I go come and punch it. Little things like that can haunt you, just like the play by McLean when he threw the ball at Williams. You say maybe it's minor, but something like that can really turn the tide in a one-point game. Like Krzyzewski's having a relaxing day sitting on the scoring table. Well, 
the middle. Yeah. Right there. yeah. <laughs> He's relaxed. He said, what's this? No big deal. I've been through a lot of big games. Four times for the final four in the last five years. I was teasing him. I said, you know, some people are calling you Bud Grant. You can get there but can't come home with the gold. He says, I'd like to get there eight more years <laughs> if it means he's getting there. Right. Go back in the corner to Palmer. Palmer whips it out, frees McCaffrey, and he got another one. That's the excellent look, looking for McCaffrey, as we talked about earlier, spotting up against the zone with the skip pass. Duke a two-point lead. Palmer slaps the shot out of there, out of bounds. Cats keep it. Time called 11, 38 to play in the contest. And the visitor, Duke leads home Arizona by two. Point lead leading Arizona 52 to 50. Well, there has been five close calls at the McHale Center within the well, the 60 home game win streaks. One was in 1987, which was the number six win of the streak. Duke lost 91 to 85. So, guys, Duke has a history of coming in here and playing the playing the Wildcats uh, pretty tough. They also broke that great streak, Cheryl, down in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's right now on another streak that Billy Tubbs doesn't like. He's getting L after L. But at that time, they were playing well. They had a 51 game win streak on December 22nd. It was bye bye by Duke. Mills for three. Doesn't get it. And Kubak rebounds it for Duke. Duke leading 52 to 50. This may be a pivotal time in this ballgame right here. Leitner's inside with a head fake. Count it. Foul. Oh, that was a great move by Leitner. He gives the head fake, the ball fake, gets the defensive player to react to the fake. Now watch right now. Here's Hurley going to make that dump down, a good bounce pass inside. Now watch right here. He takes the ball up to the goal. Now there's the ball fake. As he gets him up in the air, gets the ball back up in the air, comes back down, hangs in the air, says count. He's become such a tough clutch player lately. Womack the foul. Williams has got to come back. Leighton makes the three-point play, and it's a five-point lead for Duke. Williams showing the kind of offense he wants to run. Leighton loves playing against big people. He really, really gets excited about playing against all these so-called big names. Reeves picked up his dribble. McCaffrey eating him up. He finally saves it to, uh, to uh, Muehlbach. Sean Rooks is in the ball game. Had the shot, gave it away. Rooks had the shot. Now he's fouled by Palmer, probably, or Kubek. Kubek's begging it. He wants it because it would be four on Palmer. They can't really match up on Rooks inside. Kubek doesn't have the size, and plus Rooks has got great skills offensively. Forfeit Palmer right there gets his fourth foul. Wilbeck's going to dump no, it to gave it to Kubek. He oh, begged it. it. Yeah. Oh, see, look at the head fake. <laughs> uh, what? See, right there, he's so close to the goal at 6'11". He should have just laid it up, but he said, you know what? I want to be like the Magic Man. I want to twist and turn and dance. How many teams can go to your bench and come out with a Reeves, a Womack, and a Rooks? No. Williams gets the deep rebound. Ball slapped away from him, saved by Womack. Reeves takes it inside, gives it back to Wayne. He tries to drive the baseline, and they call a foul on Kubek for blocking. The one ingredient that's common to both these teams, very unselfish, and that's because of their coaching. The coaching of both clubs, they stress, give the ball to the open man. See the big guys inside. They really try to take advantage of that big guys. Little Williams posted. He's saying if you reverse the ball, look, I got inside position. And then you sneak a guy in a baseline with the quickness of Womack at about 6'8. Womack could start for a lot of colleges in America. Womack making the first. His first point of the ball game. You got to be a master psychologist as a coach to keep people of that talent happy. Rooks misses a layup, now gets it back. So Rooks had two rebounds inside and finally makes it into a one-point game. 55-54 Duke. There's a foul. Palmer now has four. Wolford has not really developed like I thought he would as a player and given him a lot of quality time. 
He started off getting more time earlier in the season. I mean, is there any doubt about that, Keith? Palmer's gone. That's his fifth. There's no doubt about that foul. Yet I had the other one uh, on Palmer as well. Yeah. I can't get over the poise and how calm Mike Krzyzewski is on his sideline. 10.31 to go, a one-point ball game on the road. 60 in a row, we keep emphasizing that. The longest win streak in college basketball right here. 60 in a row with 10.31, down one. He's got to come back with Thomas Hill now, and Thomas has four fouls. Grant Hill has four fouls. Look at that hairdo. I like that hairdo, Keith. Maybe they can loan it to me. <laughs> I, know, I know the guy that makes it. <laughs> he used to be a drag racer. So. <laughs> That's the Wildcat colors, blue and red. Beautiful athletic facilities outside. Baseball teams playing. Joey Kendall does a great job. Larry, he's walking to Mike Krzyzewski, and I'll tell you, it was unbelievable. He walked in, he said to Mike Krzyzewski, I just want to come and say hello, Mike, because I want to tell you, I've been watching your team for years, and I really appreciate the class that they represent. And I thought it was great that he walked in, and Mike certainly thanked him. Lomack misses the rebound tip, and we're tied at 55. Every possession now gets big. Rooks and Leitner going head-to-head. Kubak -head. finds some daylight. They want him to count the basket, Mr. Krzyzewski's. It depends on where he gets the foul. Yes, sir, they're going to count it. Reeves, the foul. Remember, you, you have to get the ball going up, not down. And whenever you're on a direct look like that to the basket, 90% of the time, they'll call goaltender. 57-55, Duke trying for three, gets it. Big three-point play out of Kubek. He brings a lot of experience, leadership off the bench. Been a little inconsistent in his career, but he's had some really solid moments as well. Brooks inside, back to Womack. Not a good shot right there by Womack. That was a force, and a try by Muehlbach to save it. Can't do it. By keeping that lead coming down the stretch, he keeps the... Crowd quiet and takes away a lot of that adrenaline, a lot of that emotion. 58-55, Duke has the lead. Look at Hurley leading. Let's go, let's go. He's got four fouls. Let's go. I mean, just really into the game, has a great understanding of what's happening. You hear him in front of us? Yep. Go back. Looks inside for Leitner, breaks loose, gets his pass through there. What a great fake. What a great fake. I love those kind of fakes. Look, he likes it too. Look at him smiling. Back to a five-point lead for the Blue Devils. Biggest possession of the game thus far for Arizona. They got to convert here. Mills cut off. Gives it to Williams. That's a great look by Chris Mills. They get the triangle offensively. Triangle by having two on the boxes and a ball in the middle and dump it to the open Williams. Three-point lead, Duke. Mills has got to pick it up on a defensive end. I'd attack Mills right now. I'd go to Thomas Hill. Brooks tries to save it. Sean almost had it. Watch Leighton with his fake in here. Look, he fakes one way, fakes another. Look at Rooks. Oh, did Rooks fall for it? Look at his reaction. Look at him smile. He says, I like that one. That's a great fly. <laughs> He's dribbling out in front now. Back to Kubek for three, won't go down. Rebound, watch that Thomas Hill soar. He can really fly. He is a soaring devil. I mean, he is flying high. Got that athletic ability from his papa, as we said, in the Olympics in 72 now as a hurdler. Ryan Davis. Davis, Ryan Davis back now. McCaffrey will have a seat. Davis and Hill have something in common. Both came to school as McCaffrey goes down as the third recruit and have really upgraded their ability level. Three-point Duke lead inside Rooks. Yeah, Rooks got to slide inside against Kubek. He's got too much size on him. Brian Williams reverses, count it. Outstanding move. move. Just an outstanding move by Williams. And then hugs his teammates. A lot of hugging going on here by both clubs. A whole lot of hugging going on. These Arizona Cats. 
Oh, let's go hug each other. Now look at Williams. He spreads. He wants the ball. He says, Leitner, I'm going to show you how to post up. I'm going to spread my body. Look at the head fake. He says, how do you like that one, Leitner? Left-handed Mr. Williams. He makes himself big the way he spreads his body. Chance to tie it right here. Third foul on Leitner. Missed it. Rook slaps it up. They'll get Rooks for the foul, I think. No, no, no. Ooh, they get Hill, maybe? That would be five if it's on yeah. Thomas. I don't know. He was sitting on the floor. I thought he got pushed. Could be Davis. It is Brian Davis. That's his third. That's one of those real close calls with all the contact going on. That is a close call to me. Take a look right here. Now the ball goes up. There's Hill trying to keep it active. I mean, I don't see any call there. Come on, give me a break. You don't blow the whistle there, Keith. Well, that, uh, there's something wrong with this basket. Duke couldn't make a free throw down here in the first half, barely 50%. Now Arizona can't make one. I'll tell you what, it was pretty sweet for me yesterday, like the Atlantic Ocean. I drilled 17 in a row with that one. <laughs> yeah, I have to, may have to make a comeback. <laughs> Brooks gets a second. And we're tied at 60. We got three dynamite games in a row now. UCLA, Arizona, last week in the end, Ohio State. This one looks like it's going to the wire. Go back. Williams checking him. Little Leitner fighting for position inside. Good catch oh. by Leitner. And a whistle and a foul. That could be Williams. Leitner really has worked on developing how to post inside, how to hit fake, ball fake. Othic. We got Othic for his four. Yeah, trying to rotate down to give some help. They're trying to double up on Leitner. The one man Arizona cannot afford to lose with eight and a half minutes to play is Brian Williams. Especially with his emotion on the floor as well as his naturally his talent and size. Khaled Reeves is coming back in. And Othic is going to go sit down. He's been talking a lot of going with a three-guard offense to play the three guards together as they well. They did against Cal the other night. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. They felt they had their best performance against Cal of the year. That's 19 points now for Christian Leitner. I thought he had more than four rebounds. Let's see his concentration. Let's see his eyes. Tommy Heinsohn used to always say, watch the eyes, watch the eyes on a free throw shooter. 62-60, Duke. Reeves against Hurley. Inside, Rooks. Over, Kubek won't go down. Williams can't get it down. Rooks has got to sit down a little bit lower in the post and take advantage of his drop steps. Kubek to Leitner, oh. back to Hurley for three. Oh. Got it. That's an, that's an excellent move, the inside-outside created by the scoring of Leitner, so unselfish, draws the ball inside to him and people and fishes, fishes it out to her. And it's back to a five-point lead and another whistle, and again, it could be Thomas Hill. It is Hill. Hill's gone. He's out. He's gone. It's a big loss. Big loss down the stretch, Thomas Hill, defensively and offensively. This young man has become one of those special players. Watch Leitner now going to slide inside. There's the dump down by Kubek. See the good spacing? Now look at the crowd he draws, five people. And he recognizes the wide open Hurley, all created by the presence of Leitner down on the baseline, catching the ball deep. Grant Hill replaces Thomas Hill and uh, free throws. Uh, Duke is 18 of 26, but Arizona only 18 of 30 and 12 of 20 at this end of the court. 12 of the 21. You know, the coaches do all they can to get the ball inside, take advantage of their personnel. Lou was working on that yesterday, and then at the end of practice, he worked on free throw shooting. But these guys got to come out here and got to concentrate. 65, 61, four-point lead. Duke, back after this message and a word from our ABC station. There's our score with 7.58 to play. Four-point lead for the Blue Devils. And at 6.30 Eastern time tonight, Ted Koppel will have... The latest information with pictures from the Persian Gulf and the front. 
the coaches. Mike Krzyzewski's bench getting a little thin now, what with all the fouls. He's lost two players, Crawford Palmer and Thomas Hill. Traveling Lakner. In this possession right now, they got to go down inside. I say you go to the offensive ability of Rooks down in a box here, and you have Williams take the offensive rebound in position if you were to miss. See, look at the size. He's got Klubeck checking the Rooks. He's got to bring it here, Reeves, and dump it to Rooks. Rooks didn't turn. He'd go for it. No, didn't go to the basket. Williams does and hits it left-handed. Well, he's been hitting consistently all year. Had that brilliant game, 14 for 15 against UCLA. Two-point game, Duke 65-63. I'll tell you what, the Lakers a lot stronger in that post than his body looks. Grant Hill doesn't go. Rebound, knocked outside and picked up by Lakers. Stolen. Not a good Reeves run. did it. Two on one, Reeves takes it in. Ooh. Two on one transition, stay a little wider, get a T.O. Mike Krzyzewski, get a little time out. Arizona has come storming back to tie it at 65. 6.52 to play in the game. A 60 game home winning string on the line for Arizona. We're tied at 65. We have been tied 13 times in the game. There have been nine lead changes. And Brian Williams has scored 15 second half points. He keeps leading the Wildcats back. Twice in this half, Duke has had a five point lead. And he had the three fouls at the end of the half and only had one basket but came alive here in the second half. Crawford Palmer and Thomas Hill have fouled out. Grant Hill was an amazing, at home. That was an amazing move by Grant Hill. That would have brought down the Cameron Crazies down at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Matador defense right there by Williams. Blew right by him. Williams, they double him. Knock it loose. Whistle, Leitner, I believe. That'll be four on Leitner. Really becoming a major problem for Duke going to the last six minutes. Leitner now with four. Look at Williams sitting in that post. I mean, is he sitting? That's the right way of playing on a post. First, he's got to get his hands up. Oh, there's the foul right oh, across. Yeah. Right across the arm. It comes at 6.25 to play in the game. Arizona didn't help themselves last Sunday when they went back east and lost to Georgia Tech at the Meadowlands. You know what Leighton should have done against him? He should have used the flop move. The Bill Lambeer flop move. He's got to learn to work on that flop what move. What is that? That's ah, a little phony move. You know, you put your chest, your body up, and you flop back. Oh, you fall back. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Lambeer's a master at it. Williams has found a home here in Tucson. He really has developed as a player. Back to a one-point game now as he makes one of the two. He's playing some screens down in the boxes. Two back against Muehlbach. Curley's had two three-pointers here in the second half. They go in to Leitner. It's spoiled, slapped away by Mills. Wildcats move it up. Excellent deflection. A lot of coaches now chart deflections. Brook. Brooks doesn't get to it. Wall had spinning rotation on it. And it spun away from him. And Lute Olsen looks like he's just ready to go to the dance. I mean, he's dressed as polished as ever. Let's see right now if they go to Grant Hill. There he is. Good move. Get Hill on a curl move. Use his driving ability against the Atlanta Maybe Reeves there. Or Rooks. It's Rooks. See, that's the one thing that makes Duke a special team, uh, Keith. They know who to go to. They know with each possession who's the key guy, who's the hot guy. Mike Krzyzewski, you should see a practice session. He's in practice. I mean, this guy is such a masterful teacher. Grant Hill can't get it to drop. Timeouts, Duke two, Arizona three. Team fouls, Duke 10, Arizona nine. Big miss. Big miss missing those two. A little air ball champ. 
One-point game with five minutes. You come up empty on a free throw line. Could hurt. For the Williams, sitting in deep against Leitner with four. So they're going to double up when Williams touches the ball down inside. Mills has got Hurley on him. It's the time for the shot. You got it. Nice touch by Chris Mills. Arizona's back to a one-point lead at 68-67. They're going to their zone defensively. Arizona going to that matchup. Hubach hustles out for Kubek. Too late. Kubek hits three, and Duke goes back to a two-point lead. That was his reputation coming out of high school, a long-range shooter. 60 games in a row, my friends. 60 in a row for the team in white with the basketball. 4.45 to play. Rooks missed it. Rebound, Chris Mills. Wanted the shot. Bounces into the hands of Rooks. And look what I found, basket. Again, size. The size is the difference on that baseline. Tough to defend those 6'11s around that basket. Yeah, Duke is at a point now where they cannot uh, afford to rest Christian Leitner. Grant Hill drives the baseline, second effort gets the basket. I'll tell you one thing, there's no way Brian Williams can check him out on the perimeter. He just blows by him on the baseline with his quickness. Inside, Rooks and Williams. Mills drives, cut off, and Muehlbach gives it up to Mills. Short. Mills over the back, got away with it. Going to back it out, put it in the hands of their little leader, their catalyst early. The quarterback, an extension of Krzyzewski, who was a point guard three years he played it. See, they're going to bring him out now. They have spread the court, bring yep. him out. They're going to say, come and check us one-on-one. -on -one. The biggest lead in the game was seven by Duke, came in the first half. Twice they've led by five in the second half. See, he Three and a half minutes to play now at 72-70, and Duke is letting the air out of the ball. He can't check him out here, Brian Williams. Doesn't have the floor speed and the quickness to check Grant Hill. He's his versatility. Look at him. But he can play on a point. Bobble his dribble a little oh, bit. Oh, not a good and pass. pass. Stolen by Khalid Reeves. Good anticipation by Reeves. Shot. Won't go down. Could have waited. Could have shown a little more patience there. They're going to go to the spread again. Find some time with late to four fouls. Inside three minutes. Home crowd hooting. Depending on where these two teams are sent and where they're seated, I think we're going to see a lot of these teams in the NCAA tournament. The team that Mike talked about a lot yesterday was Georgetown. Well, they can be a sleeper team, but they got to come up with some more scoring. Early against Reeves, Grant Hill drives the baseline and made it. But the one thing you got to love about Grant Hill, Keith, is late in his game, he's becoming a star. He's saying, give me the rock and let me take advantage of my driving ability. And he's a baby, a true freshman at 74-70, Duke by four, two minutes and 27 seconds to play. That's where we are with two minutes and 27 seconds to play in the ball game and Duke leading Arizona 74 70 and the whole thing is dramatized by the simple fact that Arizona's 60 game home winning streak is on the line. Ted Koppel along at 630 Eastern time with a special ABC News report on the Gulf War. Keith, right now, Lute Olsen's team showed a lot of guts on the road coming back to beat UCLA when they were behind. This possession down four. They got to try and get a score here out of their big people. Duke really playing the perimeter people tough. Bothick goes inside to Williams. Williams against Leitner. The ball is slapped out of his hands. And uh, Arizona will keep it. Well, with 217 down four, if they come up empty here and Duke they're gets the basketball, there could be big trouble. They're in trouble. They score here. It's still anybody's game. Stokes is in there. Kubek's on him. That's advantage Stokes inside. They missed the angle. They had the angle to Brian Williams. Mills has the ball slapped away. Hurley comes up with it, and Arizona does come up empty. Those are the little things we talk about, knowing how to win. Bob Hurley right there shows the ability, the intangibles, the hustle, the anticipation at coming out with the loose ball. They're going to spread the court and try to get the ball in the hands of Hill. 
when they run the clock down for a one-on-one -on -one maneuver. See Brian Brian Davis against Chris Mills. Brian Williams comes out against Grant Hill. Stokes comes out against Lakers. Stokes has got a foul or two to give. He's only got a couple. Mills hit with one right there, and Mills now has four personals. I think the Wildcats are in trouble. Free throw shooting now becomes really a real big arc. So many clubs lose games late on it. Late in the season, on the line, fatigue sets in. You shoot a basketball with your legs as well as you do with your follow through and your fingertips. He's got two attempts here. And the bonus. That's the first one. Mulebach is still a dangerous guy on that court with that three point shot. Duke's got the crowd kind of quiet except for that baseline where he just missed it. Williams scoops it off. They come away with nothing on two free throws. But Arizona's got to score here. I mean, they've got to get something out of this possession. They should be able to get some good angles inside because Duke is really extended on a perimeter defensively. Mills against Grant Hill. Mills gets it away. Hill with four fouls. Can't play him tough. Excellent one-on-one -on -one move by Chris Mills. Penetrating into the three-second area with a high percentage shot. Luke's got to like that shot. Duke by two at 109 to play. Duke by two at 109 to go, and the Arizona 60-game home winning streak on the line. I keep telling you that because that will be the headline tomorrow. Next Sunday, we've got a doubleheader for you. Two Eastern Time, Big Ten matchup, Michigan State against uh, number two Ohio State. Then at four Eastern, regional coverage, Minnesota, Michigan, or third ranked Arkansas against the Longhorns of Texas. Hey, that matchup, Michigan State, and also with Ohio State, could be for player of the year in a Big Ten. Jimmy Jackson and Steve Smith. Could be a little revenge, too. Michigan State beat them earlier this year. Let's see how they handle the ball here late in the game. Gonna spread, there's the trap. Got a trap Hurley. McCaffrey is back in. Oh, they throw it in the backcourt, let it go. Arizona ball. The reason they bring McCaffrey in is the ball handling ability, and they also bring him in for his free throw shooting ability. Kubik saying it was deflected, deflected. I don't think so. So does Mike, says so deflected. Well, I didn't see it. It's tough for here to see it from yep, nowhere. Yeah. Brian Davis comes in, McCaffrey comes out. Want the bigger man in there. Duke really has not capitalized late in the game. Two missed free throws by Hill, two missed ones by Davis, and then the turnover. Here's Williams against Leitner. And a travel on Williams. Good call by Richie Ballesteros. Duke has really given life to Arizona with the way they're handling the ball late in the game. Going to their defensive team in quickness now. Now watch him inside. Now let's see if he does a little shuffle, a little dance. Little dance. Oh, yeah, he picks the pivot foot. Oh, yeah. Oh, he won't. Yep. Yeah. So they're going for quickness on the floor. Lute also good coaching maneuver. Brings in Womack and Reeves. There's the foul on Womack. Well, he's going to make the little diaper dandy go to the line. He really airballed one about two minutes ago. That's three on Womack now. Both these coaches really no strategy on a sideline. In fact, when you talk about a coach, I really believe it starts with three basic ingredients. One, he better recruit. Two, he better be a communicator and a motivator. And three, he better be able to handle the technical end of the game, the bench strategy and the game preparation. These two guys do it as well as any five in the United States. Here's the game, quite likely right here. Well, if he makes one, they still got a shot with possession for the three-point play. Made the first one. 12 points now for Grant Hill. He really looked comfortable on that shot right there. I'll tell you what impressed me is the ability of Grant Hill to isolate and show versatility in taking the ball one-on-one -on -one against Brian Williams. Four-point lead for Duke at 47 seconds to play in the game. Well, they still need two possessions so they can go inside. You don't need the three right now. You gotta get the quick score. Mulebach's got to put it up. Goes inside Williams. 
Williams got the basket against Leighton and just rode him right off the court. That's a good move right there by Arizona. A lot of teams I see usually panic, Keith, and they start to shoot the three. Yep. They don't need the three because you need two possessions. Yep. Well, Arizona, early on, and they go back to halftime, and they had 16 turnovers, though. I mean, they did not play well in the first half of the game. Well, they turned the ball over, but Duke did not take advantage no, of the turnover right. and convert off it, and they kept them in the game. Duke also shot.